Hello, and in this tutorial, we are going to be animating the bird. If you can sort of hear my excitement, that's because I am excited. We're going to be animating stuff. Very basic animation, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be animation nonetheless. So, as usual, let's go to the definition.hpp file. And in here, we need to create a just a single definition. So we've already created a definition for the different bird frames, which we'll be using very soon. And this is going to have a animation, no, not anime, animation duration. And this is well just going to be how long do you want the animation to last? We've experimented with it. I feel like 0 0.4 seconds is a good amount of time, but you can change that up as you want to. So now what we are going to be doing is go into our bird.hpp and in here we need to create a public method which is going to be void animate. I'm going to take float dt and now we need to create some more private variables. So we need a vector and it's going to be of type sf texture. I'm not, I don't have the vector in here. It's actually getting it, I think, from the game, the HPP. But we do need it, so we'll explicitly put it in here. It's just good to have it in there, though, so you can exactly see what's happening. Because at a later date, you might modify the code, and this might no longer be here, or this might no longer be here. And you don't, you don't want to have dependencies on that. There won't be any duplication because they'll use hash pragma once or some sort of hash definition guards. And this is just going to be called animation frames. So we'll put all of our animation texture frames in here. We only have one sprite. Then we're going to have an unsigned integer, so it can only be a minimum value of zero. And this is going to be the animation iterator. So this is the current animation that is running or frame is being displayed. I'm going to have a clock which will be used to animate it based on a certain time interval. I'm going to call this underscore clock. And now in our bird.cpp we need to do underscore animation iterator equals zero underscore animation frames dot push back and we're going to be pushing back the texture so if we copy and paste this or let's place it here and if we duplicate this so we are pushing back all four textures and instead of setting the texture like this now, we would just do underscore animation frames dot at, and we would just use the animation iterator like so. So now if we scroll down, we can implement the animation method. So void bird animate. And we are going to put going to check if the clock dot get elapsed time so if certain amount of seconds have passed then we'll switch the animation frame if it's greater than the bird animation duration remember the bird animation duration is the entirety of the bird animation so if we got 0 0.4 seconds we want it to be changing frames every 0 0.1 second because there are four frames so 0 0.4 divided by the number of frames, which happens to be 4, equals 0 0.1. So we do divide. We could put 4, but that's a hard-coded value. We don't want that. We want to put underscore animation frames dot size. And this way, it's all dynamic. So if we change the duration, or we add more frames, or take away frames, it will all adjust accordingly. Now, we're just going to check if the animation iterator is less than animation frames dot size minus one if it is that means we still have at least one more animation that we can go up so if, it, if we're at three for example we can still go up one to number four if we're at two we can go to number three so you just put underscore animation iterator plus plus but if 
we are at let's say the last animation we don't want to keep going up because we'll be out of bounds then and there'll be no animation frame we will just put else underscore animation iterator equals zero and this just resets the animation frame that's being used we just do underscore bird sprite dot set texture to underscore animation frames dot at underscore animation iterator underscore clock dot restart we're restarting the clock now and there's just a couple of things to do in the game state dot cpp we need to load in the other textures you may have already already done that if you haven't just duplicate this so there's three instances or three more instances We've got bird frame two three and four just chain this to two three and four so that's all good now but we just need to do one last thing and that is animate the bird so to do that go to the end of your update method put bird animate and pass in dt now if we run this build is successful fantastic and we should have an animating bird click play and we have fabi which is animating looks pretty darn cool so like i was saying if i go to definitions maybe i think it's a little too fast and i want to put it at 1.0 seconds the entire animation will last one second for it to go through all the frames so each frame will be on screen for 0.25 seconds so let's see what this looks like it doesn't look very good so we can go back and let's say instead of point 1.0 f maybe if we put 0. Point, if we have 0. 0.4 versus let's put one second i mean 0. 0.1 second so it's gonna be 0. 0.025 seconds per frame as you can see <laughs> it it looks like the bird is on steroids it's going crazy so no we want 0. 0.4 and that is a value that I've experimented with and I found 0 0.4 looks very good but you can easily change that up so let's just click play make sure it's still working fantastic so we have a animating bird now in the next few videos we'll be covering actually moving the bird and creating some sort of collision system if you have any questions feel free to post them on my educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk we will also provide a link to the GitHub page which has the source code from every part of this course. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.